Hello everyone and welcome to Engage and this session is Sheet Fundamentals. My name is Anna and I'm a product marketing manager here at Smartsheet and what that means is I run our Work Smart webinar program. So if you're wondering why my voice might seem a little bit familiar, that probably means you've been to one of my webinars and I hope to see you back soon. For those of you who are joining us throughout the day today, I will actually be hosting a webinar next week to recap all of the exciting new capabilities that we released today at Engage. And you'll find links to register for that in your resources for Engage. Now, our objectives today is to learn all about Sheets. And Sheets are the foundation of your work in Smartsheet. So that means whether you are here because you want to automate some of your work or you wanna create a really beautiful dashboard, you're going to start with a sheet. And today we're going to talk about the various elements that are gonna take advantage of everything Smartsheet offers, set up your best sheet, and then that'll set you up for success in all the other areas that you're going to learn about today. We're going to do this in several ways. We'll look at our sheet structure, so making sure you are setting up the right column types, using Smartsheet hierarchy to organize your work, then we'll move on to really focusing on what's important. So once you have a sheet, once you're collaborating, how do you look at what's new? How do you stay aware of what's going on? And how do you filter to really get those actionable views? Lastly, we'll look at a couple tips for aggregating and really understanding this work that you're managing in Smartsheet. So best places to incorporate formulas and track some of those high level metrics that will help you really stay on track and achieve the purpose of the work that you're doing in Smartsheet. Before we dive into all that, I do wanna pull up our legal slide and I'm sure you've heard this a few times today, but anything that you see that might be forward looking, it might be included in my presentation and any trademarks that you see are not endorsements. Uh, something else to keep in mind is over the course of our session, I do have some colleagues with me who are standing by to answer your questions throughout the chat that's located in this session. All right, so anytime that you're starting in Smartsheet, you're going to start in the Solution Center. And this will allow you to start from scratch, whether you're building a sheet, a report, or a dashboard, or it'll also allow you to import existing work from a tool you might already be using. And lastly, we also have a variety of templates or template sets. And this allows you to download a sheet or a sheet plus reports and dashboards already pre-built for a variety of purposes. So whether you're managing projects, working or marketing, IT or HR, you can find a template for that purpose. Today, we're going to start with a template called our project launch plan. And this is going to have the basic structure to take us through all of these important elements of your sheet. To find any templates or to locate our solution center, when you're logged into Smartsheet, head over to the left panel and hit that plus sign anytime. Now our project launch plan you can see here should look pretty familiar if you've worked in a sheet before. So we have rows, we have columns, and you and other collaborators can start working really easily because of this familiar spreadsheet interface. We're going to start by talking about our primary column. And this is my task name column, and you can identify it as the primary column because it has a bold name to it, while the rest do not. The primary column is really important because you can approach this as kind of the subject line of the work that you're managing in the rest of your row. And this is also where you're going to organize your work. So you'll see I have some of my tasks indented, and this allows me to look at my work in phases. Uh, if you're tracking IT tickets or something along those lines, you can organize these by status, organize by who they're assigned to, really indent and outdent using the buttons at the top of our page here to understand your work and be able to collapse and expand instead of working through one really long sheet without that organization. You'll see here, for example, I'm going to select my demo row and I can easily come up to the top and indent and I've now created the ability to focus and collapse and expand all that information. Our primary column is that really important element where you're saying this is what my entire row is about, but there's a few other column types that are going to be really important 
to make sure that you're setting up your sheet and unlocking additional capabilities that Smartsheet has to offer. So we're going to start with the next two columns, which are our date columns. Any column that you're working in, you can right click and you'll notice we have an edit column properties section. When you're adding a column, it's really important to come over here and choose the correct column type. Now my template set already had my start and my end date columns set up as date columns. And for Smartsheet, this means I can really easily click and search through a calendar to find a date, but it's not just a matter of formatting. So by having this date column, I'm telling Smartsheet dates are really important to me. And I can now head up to this dropdown at the top of my page Currently, we're in what we call grid view, which is a really, which is Smartsheet's way of saying this is our spreadsheet view. Because I have two date columns in my sheet, I can also look at our Gantt view, which is our project management view and offers us the ability to, to see a timeline and really chronologically understand how our work is organized. You'll see we've also incorporated some color coding. We can see how our tasks are connected together, all because we've told Smartsheet these are date columns, and we're not just capturing dates in a regular text column. In addition to this timeline view, we can also toggle to our calendar view, which is also powered by those date columns and offers us another visual way to understand the work that otherwise is being tracked in a smart sheet. The great thing about all of these views that we're working in is it's not a different source of data. So whether you prefer to work in a spreadsheet or you might have collaborators that prefer to work in these other views, it's all the same data. So a change will be reflected in all the views. Next up, in addition to having these date columns to show our timeline view with the Gantt and the calendar, these dates are also going to allow Smartsheet to send reminders using automation letting yourself or letting users assign to tasks know it's time to start a task or it's time to end a task, or hopefully not, but we can also, of course, let you know if a task is overdue. Next up, we also have our contact list column, and this is equally as important as our date column because it allows you to assign work. And instead of just typing in, here's a task assigned to Anna, I can go into my column properties, you'll see I already have contact list selected. And this way I'm assigning work to the actual user. And you'll also see that the profile for each user is showing up as well. The sign two columns are important because again, we know where to send automation, letting users know when they're being assigned. We can track resource allocation. So flagging if anyone has too much work assigned to them. And all of that is powered by selecting that correct column type. We'll look at one more column that's going to be really important. And this is going to unlock that last fourth view that we didn't look at yet, our status column. And this is a drop down column. So when I go into my column properties, you'll see I have several different options listed. I can simply add additional options down the row if I need to add or remove drop down options. And this is also going to power our card view. So anytime you have a drop-down list, a contact list, or a symbol column, like we have over here in the health column to the left, we can head over to our card view. And we're going to visually see all the work that we're managing in Smartsheet. In card view here, I'm currently seeing all of my rows as cards organized by my statuses. And I can toggle this to see by symbol, for example, or by assign to. So here I'm seeing who has work assigned to them and I can even pick up a card and reassign it to someone else. And when I make this change, that'll be reflected back in my grid view as well. Now, as we've set up our sheet and we've incorporated all these columns, you'll see I have additional columns aside from those key ones that I've already added to my sheet. And that's because Smartsheet's really flexible. So while those are some of the best practices for getting the most out of Smartsheet, making sure you have access to all the views, making sure you have the information you need to power your automation, you can continue to build out your sheet and really incorporate exactly what you need to work on with your team in the sheet that you're creating. Once you have that all built out, it's really important to think about collaboration and we have another session coming up about that. 
But I do want to point out that over here on the left side of the page, we have a couple of small columns that are going to aid that collaboration. Our paperclip column is a place where you can attach files. And this is going to be Word documents, PowerPoints, you can incorporate uh, video files, which is something I do a lot working on webinars. This makes it really easy to locate what you need exactly in the row the task is for. We can also have conversations in our conversations column, making sure that you're using your sheet as a single source of truth for all of this information. And we can even work in our proofing column, which allows you to attach files, but also review, annotate, and approve if working on content is part of the work that you're managing in Smartsheet. Now that our sheet is set up, we want to look at a couple additional capabilities that'll help us really be successful in it. So we're going to start first by looking at conditional formatting at the top of our page here. Conditional formatting allows us to create rules to format or color what's in our sheet. So here you'll notice I have rules that are going to color code and you can color code your sheet or you can color code those different views that we're working in. And that's what I did. So you can see in our calendar view and our Gantt view, all of this color coding corresponds to those rules that we've created. Lastly, we also have filters. So if you really need to filter and see what is the work that's assigned to me, what tasks are read or overdue, you can create custom filters to really focus on what's important. To really understand all of this work, you can also incorporate formulas and you're going to do that anywhere in your sheet. So you'll see, for example, I've added a formula that's going to power my symbol column and to see what formulas are available, just head up to your menu towards the top here. You're going to also head over to the right panel of our page and this is where you'll find sheet summary, which is a place where you can capture any high level information. So you'll see I'm tracking who's our overall project manager. I might have a section about what this project's goal is. And I've added some additional formulas to understand all of my work by status. Now we've looked at really the key things that you need to know about working in a sheet. So making sure you have a primary column and you're using that indenting to organize your work, uh, using the correct column type for the functionality that you need and using those collaboration columns. And then of course, making sure that you're focusing with conditional formatting and filters and you're understanding your work by incorporating formulas and taking advantage of that sheet summary, which is going to create the information that you need to later power your beautiful dashboards. Now let's head on back to our slides, do a quick review and also talk about some of the resources that you have available for you here at Smartsheet. Now to review the elements that we just looked at. So we looked at this in three different areas. To be successful with a sheet, make sure you're customizing your sheet structure. So Smartsheet is used for thousands of different use cases by our customers. So when you get in there, really think about what is my team need and how can I make sure my, my sheet reflects that. Once you've created it, focus on what matters by creating and sharing filters, uh, attaching files, using conditional formatting and filters. And lastly, take a step back and approach it at a high level by incorporating formulas. The resources that you have available to you here at Smartsheet are going to include our learning center. And you can find uh, the decks for any of these sessions with these links in your resources for engage section. And I'm going to do a little plug here in our learning center. You'll also find some of our upcoming and previously run webinars, which is where if you'd like to spend a little bit more time with me, that's where you can find me. We also have a great training and certification program that you can access as well as a Smartsheet community to connect with and learn about how Smartsheet users are using Smartsheet and what other questions they have. And each of your sessions here will have an engaged brain boost. So for today, your brain boost is going to be to start creating your first sheet and really incorporating all of these elements that we talked about today. So I want to thank you all for coming to our session today. Uh, this was a pretty quick snapshot of how to use a sheet. And as I mentioned, I do run a webinar program as my day-to-day -day job at Smartsheet. And I hope you'll join me for one or more of those sessions later on.